Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. All right, welcome in. College football preview season. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. We are on every platform. YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your choice, whatever you want to listen to us on, you can find it. So go download it. Leave some nice reviews. We appreciate it. You can follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow me at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. On today's show, we are discussing the Sunbelt West Division. So we got five teams we're going to go over. We're not going to take up too much of your time. The show is brought to you by BetNow.eu. Go check them out. You can see it down here, right down there at the bottom of, if you're watching on your screen. BetNow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. That's W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0. Winning 50 will give you a 50% deposit bonus. They are a great online sports book, great layout, good odds. If you're a recreational gambler, like the majority of us are, we're not putting hundreds of thousands of dollars down on games every week. Not a six-figure guy. Nope. But if you just want to put like 100 bucks down on a game, 50 bucks down on a game, whatever, this you, is, want. whatever you feel like doing, it's your money. these are your guys. This is your spot. Check them out for yourself. They treat us right. They'll treat you right. They make it simple. BetNow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. All right, let's jump into this bad boy. The Sun Belt West. We're going alphabetical order. The Arkansas State Red Wolves went eight and five last year, five and three in the conference. Returning starters, they got six on offense, seven on defense. As far as experience goes, number eighty in the country, number nine in this conference. It's not good. Not uh, not great. No, not not out of a ten team league. No. <laughs> no. Um, head coach Blake Anderson, thirty nine and twenty five in five years. He has taken them to five bowls. Now he is one and four in those bowl games, but. We all know that these are yep. games that don't really matter. Yep. Uh, number 17 total offense in 2018, but number 92 in points per trip inside the 40. They only got 4.0 points per trip. Uh, Blake Anderson, obviously, well wishes, prayers, everything to his family, his wife going through uh, cancer treatments and whatnot. Uh, I haven't heard a lot of news on that. Have you heard anything about no, that? No, but I don't, I don't think we're going to. I mean, no, that's they, very they're much trying to keep. That, yeah, we're going to let them have privacy, and and I, I agree with that. The school and the media and people around that are, and that's right. That's, that's right, the man. right thing to do. I don't need to know that. Uh, quarterback Logan Bonner replaces Sun Belt Player of the Year Justin Hansen for new offensive coordinator Keith Hackendorf. Uh, he's the former North Carolina quarterbacks coach under Larry Fedora. That's right. Which. That makes all the sense in the world for him to come in and work in this offense. They lose the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, let's see, Ron he- Ron Heen Bingham. Ron, yeah, I think that's right. Ron Heen. I think that's R O N H E E N. Yep. Ron Heen. Uh, but the D line should be the best in the conference. Still. I was just about to say, I think the defense is still going to be really good. Yeah, defense still, and and it's not that they were great last year, but the D line, fantastic. They're replacing their offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, the conference player of the year, the conference defensive player of the year. But talent, stability, schedule should make them a contender this year. I like this team still. I know that they've got a lot of parts that have been moved around, missing, not here from last year. They were 8-5. and Kind but, of think but, that they would fall backwards. I, this I is don't. year six. There is stability here. I, I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like this team. Now, I'm a little biased. I mean, I worked in Jonesboro for a long time. I know a lot of people there. I've been around that campus for a while. I I, I like this team, but I've always liked this team. I, I will tell you this. The schedule sets up brilliantly. Well, yeah, they do have brilliantly. The, the sweetest schedule out of everybody in this conference. All their tough games are at home just about that are in conference. I mean, if, if they – if they can beat SMU at home in week one. Correct. Which that is which no is massive. easy task. I was shocked to see that was not in Dallas. And so, well, I think they, they already went to Dallas, didn't they? Or they're going next year. One of the other. It was a, it was the, a trade-off. Yeah, it's, it's, I didn't realize it was home and home. But if, and I've got them losing that game. But if they win that game, they could get to nine or ten wins pretty easily. Right. Um, they play SMU, then they've got at UNLV. I think they win that one. I, everybody in the free world thinks they're going to lose at Georgia in week three. Well, correct. Uh, Southern Illinois at home, then 
at Troy, you've got Troy early. and yeah, That's right. With the new coaching staff, you don't know what that's going to be like. You get at Georgia State, which should be able to win that game. Then you got a bye week. And then you've got Louisiana coming in. So you get two weeks to prepare for one of the toughest teams on the conference, yes. on, on the schedule. And then you got Texas State at Louisiana Monroe, and I've got them losing at ULM. Then you got a bye week before you have to finish out with Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern, and at South Alabama. Now, I think they lose to Georgia Southern I and win too. the other two. I've got them at 8-4 and four this year. I have them at 8-4 and four as well. I don't think they take a step backwards at all. No, I, I don't think so. I think I, uh, I like this. And I actually think some of the personal stuff coaches are going through and all this stuff, you know, the head coach. He was also he, going through it last year. That's right. Like this is not going away. But there's some – man, we're going we're gonna to be here for our coach. Yeah. And that's I, not going away either. That's not something that you just ever stop fighting for those people. So, so I, I think it, it is so important the way that – schedules set up. Oh, I completely agree. And this one for Arkansas State, I've got them 6-2 and two in the conference. I've actually, uh, let's see, I've actually got them winning that division. So, and they, I don't think they've won the Sun Belt West. Uh, I haven't won in the division as well. In in a while. Like, I, they really should have won it last year. And I have, them, in, I have them with the best overall record in that division, not just winning it. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm the same way. So, if and you want to turn it off you. now... Go ahead. You, you figured out who our division winner is. If, we, if you're one of the other teams and you you just you already pissed off. There you go. There you go. Well, let's uh, move on to those other teams. Let's move on to the other teams. Where are we going? We're going to Louisiana. Lafayette. The old Lafayette. You got it. Their website still says Louisiana Lafayette. Does it really? That's what I I googled it, and that's the first thing that came. Wow, out. that's crazy. Raging uh, Cajuns. Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Look. I love Billy Napier. I was just about to say, he might he's my favorite coach on this half of the conference. He might be my favorite coach in this conference. Well, I, I'll tell you this. He this coached game. under Dabo. He coached under Saban. The guy can recruit. Yep. Um, look, they went 7-7 seven and seven last year in his first season. 5-3 and three in conference. Uh, they lost the conference championship game. They lost the bowl game to Tulane, the Cure Bowl. Returning starters, they got 8 on offense, 7 on defense. As far as experience goes, number 15 in the country, number four in this conference, which is just bonkers. Like, <laughs> God. Uh, 15th in the country, some about you'd think it'd be number one or two. No. Nope. They nope. make top three. From 2016 through 2018, Louisiana, or ULL, or whatever, uh, but Louisiana signed 16 three stars in three seasons. In 2019, they signed 22. Yep. He got that thing rolling. So right. they've got talent. They got three returning running backs: uh, Trey Regus, Elijah Mitchell, Raymond Calais. They accounted for over thirty five hundred yards and thirty three touchdowns last year. That offense will be absolutely rolling. Uh, yes, they they lose quarterback Andre Nunez. His heir apparent Levi Lewis has a ton of competition, but this offense doesn't really rely on a quarterback. Like it's it's kind of what he learned under Saban, where kind of game manager and let everybody else I was just about do what say, they do. Don't turn the ball over. Number 97 total defense last year, but should be better. They got seven starters and a ton of experience back. Uh, I think I think this team gets better. It's close to having them win this conference. But I, I will tell you this. Arkansas State game, that's why. Well, they their schedule sets up not nearly as good as Arkansas State. Oh, no, not close. And this and that's that's where I'm coming in. This is yep. still year two. It is still a rebuild. Yeah, they brought in 22 three stars in 2019, but they, it, they're still new. Well, they're yeah. If they're if especially when they're freshmen, that's tough. The only time you bring a bunch of new kids in, and I like those is if the, the JUCOs. Cause, yeah, because they're older. I mean, yeah. you've got 18 they, year olds but, playing against 20 year olds, and at that point in time. Those two years of working out, training, playing football, and experience are just they, – they mean a lot. So, as far as the schedule goes, they open up with a game against Mississippi State in the Superdome, which is kind of cool. That, that is a, that's going to be a fun that's, place to that's play. That's definitely cool. Uh, then they've got Liberty. Mr. Hugh Freeze comes into town. That's going to be a tougher game. That, it's, the, it's, another, it's another non-conference loss that I think I got them at. Well, now I've got them winning that one, um, but only because it's at home. Yeah. You know? it's, it's just a coin flip game for Yeah, me. Coin, coin flip game. Uh, Texas Southern after that at Ohio. I've actually got them beating Ohio. Like I, you and I talked about, I've got Ohio going 10-2. and two. 
But this is one of their losses. I think this is one of their. I think Ohio coming down like in September to oh, Lafayette. Yeah, that's like, right. I think that's. I think that's a win there. That's right. And then you go at Georgia Southern. I think that's a loss. You got to buy. And then App State at Arkansas State. I think they lose both of those. You got another buy. And then I think they start to roll off some wins here. Texas State at Coastal Carolina at South Alabama, Troy and Louisiana Monroe. There, I think they will lose to Troy. Well, I've got them losing to Troy. It could be Troy or ULM, That's right. That's one right. or the other. Uh, but I've got them at seven and five and four and four in the conference, and I think they could be improved off of last season and still have a seven and five record. I completely agree. I got a seven and five as well. And and so like you and I don't talk. We don't talk at all before we come in to record these and we have had very similar records. We're, on. we're close. So here's my logic on those three you got three non conference games in um Mississippi State, Mississippi State Liberty, one. Liberty and, 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 at Ohio. and at Ohio. And my thought process is I I think they're getting away with one of those wins, definitely. And I just talked about Ohio coming down to Lafayette. Yeah. It's actually Louisiana going to Ohio. Ohio. Um, I still think they get that win. It, but, but I don't like know I said, why. I think they're going to win one of those games. I, what well, I mean, we assume they're going to lose Mississippi State. Yeah. I think the other two, I don't think they get they get beaten by both of them. I don't know which game they're going to win. But okay. I don't. I don't see. I think this is a really well coached team. I don't think they're going to lose to two non conference opponents that are of equal caliber of them. I'm yeah, saying think, that really badly. That they, and I don't yeah. know how to phrase that a word. No, no, no. I, I see what you're saying. Like there's saying. there's clumps of teams that I think are all the same that they're going to play in like the same sphere and the same level of play. And and I I think they'll win some. I think they'll lose. Some. This is why I'm really bad at the they'll win this game. They'll lose this game. It's they're going to play these three games. I think they'll lose two of them. And that's yeah. kind of how yeah. I look at the world and, and these teams. I. St- I still really like this coach. Yeah. I like what they're doing. I really – I kind of went into this not looking at the schedule, just thinking, all right, I'm going to have them win in this division. Yeah. And I was kind of shocked when I looked back and said, maybe I got, maybe I I got Arkansas State. I got Arkansas State by one one game, and it's that game. If if everything folds the way I think it will and they beat Arkansas State, they, they'll win this conference. They'll be 8-4, and four, and Arkansas State will be 7-5. and five. Yeah, I could I could see that. That's how math works. That is exactly how math works. <laughs> All right, we'll All get right. out of there. All right, so uh, the so other, I've, we both got them seven and five. The I've got Louisiana them. Team. I've got them four and four as far as their conference record, um, which is two games worse than Arkansas State. But if they beat Arkansas State, that would put them at five and three, and put Arkansas State at five and three, and then they have the tiebreaker. They would have the tiebreaker. So, yeah, that's the way. Uh, you're right. Math works. All right, let's move on from there. The good people of Monroe, Louisiana. But nope, nope, nope. Are we not? Not that one. We're going to alphabetical order, right? Uh, yeah, but I, so alphabetical order was ULM. Um, I'm oh. I'm I'm moving to South Alabama. Okay. South Alabama Jaguars. That's not how alphabetical order works. To me. No, it's not. It's I'm sorry. completely. It uh, yeah. <laughs> the way that I had written it down and You're whatnot. Good. And it's actually the way that it's set up at FB schedules. You you have yeah. way more work. I have, you I put have way ULM. more work into this. You get to do whatever you want. South Alabama Jaguars, three and nine last year, two and six in the conference. Returning starters, they got five on offense. They got four on defense. Now this is where this is where it's not good. Okay. Number one twenty five in the country yeah. in returning experience out of one hundred and thirty. Dead last in the D- conference. Number DFL. ten. Um, head coach Steve Campbell, he won the D2 national title at Delta State. He won a JUCO national title at Mississippi Gulf Coast. He was the FCS Southland uh, Conference title winner at Central Arkansas. The guy obviously knows how to win. You're in Mobile. You're going to get talent. Well, this is one of those teams like, we compared to in the last video, like Georgia, Georgia State. State. That is one, Alabama, Mississippi, the, the Georgia, deep south, yeah. the Georgia – the, the Deep South has a lot of these colleges, and they all look alike. If you tell me you can't win because of talent, you're wrong. You're just – all of these schools can get dudes. You are 100% right on that. Your acceptance to the academics to get in are not stringent, are not, not strict at all. Not hard. that high. If you can recruit, you can get players. 
you got to figure out what to do with them. You have to be able to coach these guys. There are a ton of guys in those states that cannot get into the bigger universities. That's right. Uh, and they can play football. Yeah, and they can play. They're really good. Sophomore quarterback Cephas Johnson is sixth quarterback in six years. <laughs> that's he, tough. Uh, I mean, that's, that's there's just tough. no stability at that position. He looks the part. Uh, yeah. Six foot five, two hundred twenty five pounds. They got three offensive linemen back, but the offensive line was really bad last year. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The defense was slow. If you watched this team last year, the defense was always reacting late to things. Uh, they they were using 3-4 four and 4-3 four, schemes last year, so it looked like they just didn't know how to react. They didn't know what they were doing. This year, they're focusing on 3-4, and they recruited a bunch of speed. Now, it's all unproven, but at least they got some speed this time, right? It's uh, the one thing that drives me crazy when I look at these teams from the Deep South like this. You should be athletic. You yeah. should. These other teams should not be a lot faster than you. No, that, that that's well, the one I think, thing. I think a lot of this like was like reaction, decision time. making. Yeah, I think I think they were very hesitant. They were on, going back and forth on scheming, and and so seven years in FBS, all of them losing seasons. Yep, the team is big, long, and athletic, but man, the schedule is insane. Like they they went three and nine last year, and we don't really trust this coaching staff, right? Like they haven't given us a reason to put them up there with, you know, some of these other guys. I don't trust them in this spot yet. Like obviously, Steve Campbell has a pretty good resume. Well, yeah, you know, it, national championship in D two, national championship in JUCO, uh, Southland Conference champion in FCS. You know, like all of that stuff matters, but. At some point now, we got to translate it here or not. Yeah, and it's he. This is this is what year two. Yeah, uh, Joey Jones did a pretty good job here, but he was never able to quite get over the hump. Like he he had some good upsets, you know. Like at, oh he, no, yeah, I remember South South Bama was was a team you didn't want to play if you're one of the big boys right. all the time. But but they could never maintain that stability. And yeah, it's it's only been seven years in FBS. And and this was a pretty new program, you know. I mean, it's like it's very recently just been built up. But you would assume because of all the talent and everything that they should be able to uh, make something out of this. But man, this schedule is brutal. And I, I'll go on to tell you, I've got them one eleven. Whoo, okay. And I've, I've got them this, zero and eight in conference. So this is where like, Georgia Southern. Remember, remember uh, uh, Georgia State. I had them one eleven last one. I've got South Alabama three and nine again. I've got to get a couple of wins because I just think they've got athletes. I mean, they they got athletes, they're, but like they're I just, big and they're strong and they're fast, and that's what you need to be to play football. I think I think the schedule sets up very poorly for them. Look, they play at Nebraska to start, so oh, yeah. obviously uh, you know Scott Frost and that bunch. That uh, they win against Jackson State, but then you got Memphis at home. Nah, I don't think they win no. that one. Mm. Uh, you're playing at UAB. No, I think they lose that. No. I, they play at Louisiana Monroe right after that. I don't think that you can get that done because you're still like working with brand new guys, and Louisiana Monroe is one of the most experienced. Um, I mean, they're they're the number. Louis, before we get to them, ULM is number three in the country in experience, number two in the conference, which is hilarious. Um, you know, but it, the, the problem is you've got them early. You still got them in September, correct? So after that, you play Georgia Southern at home. Like your toughest games are at home, and you're Games that are kind of you whatever could win. your your coin flip games are all on the road. So after Georgia Southern at home, you got to buy. Week. Well, they don't have a whole lot of coin flip games. Well, they, well that's that's the <laughs> problem, no, right? These teams are going like at Louisiana Monroe might have been a coin flip game, but okay, I got. But you. it's but it's on the road and it's early against an experienced team, and you don't have a bunch of experience. So if that was in November. It might be a different first, story. First weekend in November, we're having a different conversation. Then you got a bye week before you play at Troy on a Wednesday night. I just think you're not winning that game. Appalachian State yeah. comes to you the next week. They're not winning. That then game. you got a bye week. Then you play at Texas State, which is a coin flip game. But Texas State is the number one most experienced team in the conference. We'll get to the, them in a minute. And, and Jake Spavital, and and I don't think Texas State is all that good, but they've got talent too. That's right. That's right. They so, look a lot like all these other teams. So if you got Texas Dudes State, are big, with, strong, and fast, exactly, and you got to play them on the road. And then you play Louisiana at home, and then you play at Georgia State late in the season when okay. they're going to be hungry for a win. Both of you will be, but like well, yeah, you got to go on the road. Every, 
all of these teams are going to be hurting to find a W. Somewhere. Exactly. And then Arkansas State comes to your place to close out on, we just think on Black better, Friday. We just think they're a better team. So that's that's why I've got them one eleven because I cannot find the wins. Yeah. Like all of the the toss up games. I got them. I got them three and nine just because I think. They can find some wins. They're somewhere. gonna be they're gonna be hungry to get a win, and I for some reason whatsoever I, I've I've got them over Texas State. I've got them over Georgia State. I can't give you a lot of logic or reasoning or, or whatever. I, I I I don't know. I understand it. I mean, those I are just those think are they've got. Games. I think they've got athletes. Yeah, they oh they absolutely do. And I just work under the impression that they've got more athletes than those other guys, even That's, though the teams are constructed pretty close to the same. They've got more athletes. I I can understand it. I can understand it. All right. We'll move on from there. Now we're going to Texas State. The Bobcats. Keep forgetting you got the U up there. Three and nine. One and seven in the conference last year. Six starters back on offense. Ten back on defense. The number one most experienced team in the conference. Number two most experienced in the country. Brand new head coach, Jake Spavital, former OC at West Virginia, Cal, and Texas A&M. The new offensive coordinator there is legendary Bob Stitt. He was the former head coach at Montana. Incredibly innovative. Incredibly innovative. Uh, The defense went from allowing 6.8 yards per play, that's number 115 in the country, in 2017 to 5.1 last year. That was number 28 in the country. Uh, They are returning a ton of experience on defense. So... They improved a bunch last year. Imagine what it'll be like this year. It's the most experienced team in the conference and the country. Well, second in the country. If the offense clicks even a little bit between uh, Stitt and Spavital, this schedule sets up decently for a bowl run. Now, I don't have a making a bowl, but so we're we're pretty different. But, I, but well, I don't know how different. I don't know how different we are. Okay. Um, I'll tell you this. I've got them at three and nine, and I'll go through the schedule here in a second. But three and nine, two and six in conference. I think they win against uh, South Alabama at home. I think they win against Georgia State. So that's the difference. Okay, we got the South Alabama game. I've got them two and ten, um, and it's the difference in that game. And 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 let me give you my reasons for all this. They've got a lot of experience, and then they've got all of these new offensive schemes and, and new coaches coming in. You can take all that experience and throw it out the window. If they're trying to – you've got a new innovative coach, that guy doesn't need the experience. He wants dudes that have never taken a snap in college that he can say, I'm going to mold you, I'm going to groom you, I'm going to teach you my offense because he is innovative, and they've been running stale stuff. Yeah. I don't I don't know that a guy that ran stale stuff for a couple of years can just say, put me with a mathematician – that's going to figure out all these angles and say this is the creative offense I'm putting together and work. I think sometimes – we've had this conversation about some of these teams. I think sometimes these coaches make things too complicated. I can believe that. And I think you, when you have athletes, you need to simplify. Find – we talk about this all the time. Find what somebody's good at and exploit. Just do it over and over and over again. Yeah. And I think sometimes these guys are geniuses. They're absolute geniuses. But but if your talent's not that level genius, then you've got to do what's best for the talent. And you can't just say, well, I've got this brain, I've got this game plan, and if you would just execute it, we'll win all our games. Yeah. I think they make this stuff too complicated. That's my long-winded reason for why I all that experience does not matter if you're going to completely change everything about what they've done now I, I think the first three games are the reason why i have them beating georgia state uh they play at texas a m wyoming at home and at smu i've got them losing all three of those obviously but i think that they can get georgia state after seeing those, those talent that's right if you play georgia state immediately coming off of those guys then yeah well it's the same reason that batters like they have the weighted bat before they get up and swing at right. you know a fastball so Something like that. I mean, then they've they've got Nichols. I think I think they get the Nichols win. Um, but yeah, they play at Arkansas State, at Louisiana, and then they come back uh, for the first time in a month against South Alabama. I think they can find a way to get that one. Where, where we're different is just yeah, in conference. Yeah, and it's in, Georgia State, South Alabama, in Texas State, Texas State. That's it. Those three teams, and I've got yeah. All right, so let's move on from there. That's the it. Louisiana okay. Monroe Warhawks. 
That's uh, yeah. Now we're That's going me. to Louisiana. Louisiana Monroe ULM six and six last year, four and four in conference. Returning starters, they've got seven on offense, nine on defense. Number two most experienced team in the conference behind Texas State. Number three in the country. Head coach uh, Matt Viator. I think it's probably Viator <laughs> or you somewhere think, around I think there. I, th- I would have said Viator. Uh, well, is it Viator or Viator? Uh, is like Viator sounds really. T O R. That's what. It, yeah, but he, he it, they're from Louisiana. Like uh, they. Oh, uh, well, uh, if you're gonna say that, you're gonna Viator. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. just really good. You just give it the good, good V and then uh, <laughs> and you, you're fine. <laughs> 14 and 22 <laughs> in three years. He was the head coach at McNeese State for 10 years. Uh, he has built a good foundation here. At, he knows I, I this like area. Him. I wanted them to be better than what I actually gave them. but um, They are so I did six and six last year. Pretty good. Didn't That's make right. a bowl game. Uh, quarterback Caleb Evans has had back to back 2,800 plus yard seasons. The entire starting offensive line is back. The worst passing defense in the country last year. Uh, two hundred forty-seven point one point or uh, yards per game. The secondary returns a lot of experience. Uh, pretty much everybody's back, as far as this team goes. Don't know if that's a good thing or not. No, I'll, I'll tell you this: the fifth, uh, the fifth worst turnover margin in FBS last year. They were minus twelve. An experienced team should improve those numbers, and that's just right. turnover luck in and of itself should, should regress to the means. It should. Yes. It should go back. It should improve if you even got if ever a lot, so slightly. You won't get as many if you right. gave up a ton, unless your quarterback is the one throwing just a massive amount of interceptions. That that that's not. Now luck. he that's, he threw twelve interceptions last year. That's that was not crazy. after only throwing six the first season. No, that's a big jump, but that's not really crazy. I mean, right. one one a game, it's not insane in the way we play football today. Exactly. That's that's People not too shabby. Too damn much. So. I've got them at five and seven Man. this year. I've got them four and four in the conference. Uh, I think their experience wins a lot of games, but I mean they're out of conference stuff. They they play Memphis, yep. they play at Iowa State, they play at Florida State, yep. and no, I don't think that any of those teams are going to be world beaters. Iowa State could be really no, good. We, well, but we but, both like Memphis and Iowa State a lot. Yeah, a and lot. I think that Florida State has significantly more talent. I completely agree. So with that. all Florida State has to do is hand the ball off yep. every play. No, we 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 see this the exact same once again. I got them five and seven. I I wanted I wanted them to be a contender in this conference. I I think defensively they just lack. They do. I mean they're going to be one of those teams where this is a fun game to watch. If you catch them on the 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 Sun Belt Tuesday night Wednesday night games, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yep. They're going to put up points. The other team going to put up points. You know what sucks? They don't play a single one of those weeknight games. They play do at they, not? they play at Texas State on Thursday October tenth. Man, they used to, the Sun Belt always has those. Now the Sun Belt does games. have you know. It's just not them. It's just not them. Well, they're like, a fun team to watch too, man. Yeah. We, so, well, other than that Thursday night game, I mean, th- unless you're just finding some type of streaming service, which you get all the time anyway, like you're just not watching those guys. I mean, you you got South Alabama at Troy on a Wednesday. You've got Louisiana at Ap- uh, no, sorry, Appalachian State. At Louisiana, so on you're going to have they're doing the big boys against one another a lot, and they just don't see Monroe as one of those teams. They do not. That's probably fine though. I mean, I, I don't know that whoever's making TV schedules is wrong for that. They're right I in think, the middle between the haves and the have-nots. If there was a, a like a middle class of this conference, yeah, they're that's, it. Uh, they're it, right? I mean, I've, I've got them four and four in the conference. Yeah, I mean that's so. that's it. All right, that's going to wrap up the Sun Belt West. As always, go to winningcureseverything.com and uh, and head over to betnow.eu. We'll see you guys next time. It's time Thanks for, for checking rundown. out Winning Cures Everything. If Remember you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast you can give us a like app. On Visit Facebook, the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook you can or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us. G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. You can also email the show, that's winningcureseverything at gmail.com, and we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551-226-9899. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team or praise us or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, 
leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551-226-9899, and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show, and until next time, have a good one, guys. Hey, don't forget, subscribe to the Winning Cures Everything podcast on iTunes and make sure you leave a review. For every 25 written five-star reviews we get on iTunes, we are donating to St. Jude's Children's Hospital and Le Bonheur's Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. So subscribe and review on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all your favorite podcast apps. Remember, the Winning Cures Everything podcast.